When I was in the Army, we heard rumors told in hushed voices about a switch from the 5.56 to the 6.8. It was only a legend then. It was told in the shadows at the time. I was a young, innocent man back then. The military is developing an entirely new, unique round with different ballistics and properties. It's not the 6.8 SPC against an old 5.56-55 grain bullet. And that's where things can get confusing. This is why you have people swearing up and down that the 6.8 can't do the job or that the 5.56 sucks. The truth is out there. First, we'll talk about the ammo because that's what this contract is going to hinge on, I think. Then we'll go into the arguments for and against the switch. Case telescoped ammo, which is made out of polymer materials, has a 40% reduction in weight. That is the most reduction in weight out of all of the ammo types. They kind of look like smokes though, don't they? It'll only take a few months before privates start trying to light those things up. Don't do that. We'll end up with warning labels all over them. They'll be really weird saying like, don't try to smoke these. This is cutting edge stuff. It's only as early as 2008 that the manufacturing process for telescoped ammo became cheap enough and effective enough for mass production. They achieved this by reducing the number of steps for production of this ammo from 14 to just two. And they're continuing to improve it by developing cheaper and more environmentally friendly options for this type of ammo. They're also modifying the propellant burn rate, giving it an exterior coating to prevent transferred heat. And that's one of the big problems with this type of ammunition. People are concerned that when you're firing it on full auto, there's gonna be too much of a transfer of heat, so the ammo's not gonna work. Using this creates a few hurdles, and they're not impossible to jump over though. There's no supply chain for the ammo, no source suppliers really, and few material replacements. There's a propellant charge, and then a copper piece, which is the charge, and then the bullet. It kind of reminds me of how you used to load a musket. First you put the gunpowder in, then you shove the bullet down, and then cock it back, and three minutes later you can fire. But this all begs the question, is this ammo reliable? Does it malfunction frequently? Does it hold up against 120 degree heat? Can Joe drop it, kick it, chew it, eat it, and then still fire it? Can you shoot the M249 saw on full auto while the barrel gets glowing red hot and then you have to swap out the barrel and keep shooting and the thing is burning in your hands and then you go and put another belt of telescoped ammo and it all explodes because it can't handle the heat? Obviously, this is an exaggeration, but stress tests have shown that this type of ammo has limitations in the past. I know science is developing faster than ever before. Those rounds look like they would fall apart in my cargo pocket next to all my Pop-Tarts. This telescoped plastic ammo needs to be able to hold up to the level of abuse that a toddler or a new private would give it. Now the next ammo type bid, General Dynamics are developing their own type of ammo as well with a partnership with True Velocity. It's a polymer cased 6.8 round. This is different than telescope rounds. This ammo is 30% lighter than your brass ammunition. It's 100% recyclable, but at 30% that means it's a little bit heavier than the last bid. They also claim a substantial reduction in flash from this type of ammunition. Another advantage is spent casings are cool to the touch. So no more having to fish out hot brass that's gone down your shirt because your pal next to you has been firing way too close to your face. True Velocity press releases state that the 6.8 composite case design produces a level of performance and consistency and efficiency that has never been seen before in small arms ammunition. The General Dynamics bid also has a kind of composite hybrid case with a metal base attached to a polymer body. Interesting to see two different types of bids going with a composite type of case here where we've never seen something like that in the past. Let's look close at how this bullet is encased in the body. Similar looking to standard issue rounds, but deceivingly so. If you look closer, the case has a small slope from the body to the neck of the bullet itself. In other rounds, this is a more pronounced slope. This design difference was likely put there to help strengthen the bullet in the case. That's what I'm talking about with it. They appear to be weak sometimes, like if you were to just drop it, the freaking bullet would come out. So why is reduction in weight really interesting to the Army? You might think it's because they are worried about the weight on Joe's back. That's not the case. They're worried about the logistics. They could save millions of dollars by reducing the weight so they could ship millions of rounds around the country and around the world. We need to talk about one other thing with this bid, the suppressor. It's a strange looking beast. Look at that thing and everyone in the comments has been saying that it looks like a oil filter. Yeah, it's, uh, you're not wrong about that. The Sig Sauer bid. I saved everyone's favorite for last. The ammo in Sig Sauer is absolutely fascinating. Like with all the bids, the ammo here is going to have a huge impact on the decision that is made. The reciprocating barrel 
and the change in ammo types is really the biggest thing here with these bids. The thought process behind this type of ammo comes from their understanding that the ammo manufacturing plants aren't going to want to switch from something completely different. They're signaling to those manufacturers that they can easily switch over to developing these type of rounds if they need to, instead of these polymer plastic cases, which would really just change the entire way that ammo manufacturing goes. SIG knows that they need to have to take NATO into account and this ammo, while it's the least reduction in weight of all three bids, it only has a 20% reduction, I say only, but 20% reduction from the current standard brass rounds is, is huge. Has the most practical sounding game plan for mass implementation with our forces and our ally forces. And this kind of smarts is why SIG won the pistol bid with their modular design. Keeping the look of the 6.8 carbine similar to the M4 probably helps too. People are afraid of change. I know I am. I've worn this shirt for two weeks straight and it's starting to become a problem at the office. Not only is the weight reduced, but the velocity is increased, which is exactly what they were going for. Because the whole point of these, this weapon switch is to be able to engage past 400 meters with minimal effort and minimal training. What about the arguments for and against the switch in the first place? During World War I, we started collecting data on battles and gaining insight from the available numbers. I noticed this while reading through various sources. We got a huge advantage in World War II with the explosion of computers and their ability to eat large amounts of data and spit out trends or patterns in these statistics to give us an idea we might never have had before. Obviously, these numbers can be misinterpreted or answers gleaned from them that can be implemented in bureaucratic terrible ways, but the 6-8 round is the culmination of development in weapon science and data on wars as well as lessons learned over the past 60 years. How did we end up here? We switched from the M1 Garand to the M14 because we wanted automatic capabilities in Vietnam. We had instant buyer's remorse and realized fully auto 762 in a rifle was going to be impossible to fire accurately for most soldiers, especially drafted ones, which is largely why we have abandoned the draft since then, because it turns out an all volunteer army functions better. Who knew forcing people into service wouldn't work out? Once we started using the smaller rounds, everybody started complaining. Grunts like me always like to talk about how bigger is better out of I can only assume a deep insecurity that we have. But decades of improving the M16 platform and improved training meant 60 years later, we were using the arrow the right way. It's like when a new PlayStation comes out and all the games are terrible at first, but just in time for a new PlayStation to come out and replace the old one, the games get amazing. When the global war on terror first started, there were more engagements indoors in battles like Fallujah. The enemy had found a weak spot in our armor. Most troops were not heavily trained on urban operations on the onset of Iraq and Afghanistan. 5.56, while perfect in rifle size and recoil for clearing rooms, wasn't going to reach its potential without the right training. The US military did what they do best and they did an about face. It's incredible they could move such a large ship so fast. They changed training on a dime and taught every single soldier the basics of room clearing in mount operations. After that, the terrorists couldn't hide indoors as easily and engagements have gotten further and further out since then because they realized that this is a way that they could beat our advantage. Now we're running into problems where reports in the field suggest one round for a 5.56 isn't enough to stop the enemy. So the military looks back on its records and it's like, oh, we're not going back to the 7.62. We got on that train already and it took us to nowhere. Let's go with the Goldilocks of rounds, the intermediate 6.8. It'll go further, have more power, and it'll be easier to shoot and train on than a 7.62 because it has less recoil and weighs less. Soldiers and Marines will be able to carry the same 210 round full kit load without adding too much weight. Another reason people hated the 5.56 so much and it got a bad rap was the original 5.5 grain bullet was too light. There were reports of vegetation, wind, deflecting the bullet off course. Those problems have since been resolved with the new round. The goal of the 6.8 and the new weapon that'll fire it is an experimentation of sorts. And the Army's trying to see if there are manufacturers who are capable of making their dream weapon. It'll cost millions of dollars. This is R&D that I think is worth it. The same people complaining about all the quote unquote wasted money on the 6.8 are the same people who cry foul when we get into the next war and we don't have up armored Humvees or we don't have the right body armor. You can't have it both ways. I think we need to do this weapons program every so often to make sure we're staying ahead of the competition. If the competition has level four body armor and our ammo isn't able to defeat it, well, then, I don't know, maybe we should look into that. There are other arguments that the 5.56 is the best round because soldiers are unlikely to be able to hit targets further than 300 meters out, which without an ACOG or one of those Romeo 9 sights might be true, but as technology for optics becomes cheaper and more available, we're seeing everyone get outfitted with the kind of optics that allows 
for 500 meters and beyond engagement. Please remember to subscribe and comment below your thoughts on the 6.8, the 5.56, and the switch. Let us know what you think and stay tuned for our next video.